Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I am back to the Red Rains mode for Ashes Reborn, the deck construction game of battling, but this is a solo co-op mode that I've covered in the past. But they sent me a review copy of the newest boss, the Blight of Neverset. Look at that adorable little plant. He wants to eat our souls and blood. And if you like the content of the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast for reviews and design discussions, or join the conversation and come say hi on our Discord. This is the third boss that they've released, and so far the most different one out of all the released ones, because they have a lot of their aspects, the enemies they'll summon, that don't attack you at all and just kind of sit there doing terrible things to you unless you can deal with them. So I'm very excited to play this one, and I'm going to try a very different deck than I've played in the past on the channel. I'm going to be doing the basic deck for Saria Guideman, who is a charming character, I guess. But her big thing is that she has in her base deck a ton of cards, like this Abundance card and this Purge card, that can consistently mill cards. That's a Magic the Gathering term, if you don't know it. <laughs> that means to uh, discard cards from your opponent's deck. She can mill cards from the Chimera's deck and basically deck them out by causing them automatic damage when they can't do her discard and draw effects. If you didn't watch my previous videos, my first one had some like big beat stick characters. My second video is more of like a horde strategy. This one is going to be super light on uh, units. I really only have like a couple that I can get consistently and they aren't that strong. But before we jump in, if you're familiar with the basic deck, I made a few changes. So first of all, in the Blight of Neverset set, that's too many sets right there. Uh, they have some alternate cards for Saria, and I have just kept one copy of Summon Seaside Raven, which is her most powerful uh, unit that she can summon consistently. He's pretty awesome. I got rid of the other two copies in her deck, though, and I replaced them with two copies of her alternate uh, special card, which is Willpower, which deals damage to a unit based on the number of cards in your hand, and she tends to have a pretty close to full hand size. So that should be great to just blast a couple of uh, their strongest units away. And and then I got rid of a couple of copies of Summon Three-Eyed Owl. So I'm just keeping one in my deck because you can only summon two of them and only one of the Seaside Raven at a time. So basically I've just cut out a bunch of redundant summoning cards. And instead I've put in two channel magic cards. You're allowed to uh, substitute up to three of these for your starting cards in your deck. And in terms of my dice pool, you get 10 dice at the start of the game. Uh, Saria usually has half charm magic, which can reduce the attack value of enemies. And half illusion magic, which lets you mess with the enemy's dice. But I've splashed in a couple of natural magic dice. Uh, you've seen these before if you've seen my other playthroughs. They can deal one damage straight up to enemy units. And a lot of the cards in the Blight of Neverset set, first of all, just have one life, but then also it can put out these Scarlet Seeds that only have one life. But if you leave them alone too long, they automatically give the Blight of Neverset a Red Rains token, which will make uh, them quicker to fire off their ultimate ability and do terrible stuff to us. So I figured a chance for some automatic frog-based damage might be pretty helpful. And then if you haven't seen Ashes before, you get to pick your starting five cards. I'm starting with a Purge and Abundance, one copy of each, which are the kind of key cards in my deck to mill out their deck and run them out of cards so I can kill them. An Enchanted Violinist, who's a pretty weak character, but you can do consistent damage to the opposing units. And like I said, they'll often have not that much life. And she can also mill more cards, make them discard more cards when she does that damage. And then very importantly, I've got both of my summoning spells, especially my ridiculously powerful Seaside Raven, ready to go. So I'm going to have like all four of my planned ready spells. These ones that just sit out and can be used every turn right off the bat. Plus an Enchanted Violinist. I might not have enough bang for my buck to stop them from doing some nasty things on the first turn, but hopefully I can uh, do well after that. And with that, I'll go ahead and shuffle and set things up. And I'll assume you've sort of watched some of the previous videos. I'll explain some of the mechanics as the game goes along, but this will be my least teachy video since I already have two of the game on the channel. All right, so going to the first prepare phase, let's see how our dice turn out for us. Uh, okay, I got some masks, some hearts, uh, none of the highest results. Each of the three types of dice I have has a one out of six chance of rolling this thing that can then be used for a special dice power effect. I didn't get any of that, but at least I'll have uh, some hearts and masks to buy things with, and I, I might be able to change some dice if I need to. And at standard level one for a one-player game, the Blight of Neverset has 30 life. I got to defeat them before 
They get rid of Saria's 20 life, and they start out with a single one blood aspect and then three two blood aspects. Should be great. All right, and to kick things off, you have to take one main action on your turn, which is going to usually be this little, uh, like, complicated star symbol. You can also choose to take a side action, this little star symbol, but you don't have to. So for my first main action, I'm going to get my summon Seaside Raven ready spell out. I can use it as a main action later in the turn and exhaust the card, this little triangle symbol, to show I can't use it again, and spend three basic dice to get my Seaside Raven onto the board. And this is my biggest bruiser in the game. It's got the Prey 2 ability. When this unit comes into play, you may destroy another target unit with a life value of two or less, so I can just immediately poach one of their uh, aspects out of play. And then it's got three attack and the quick strike ability. While this unit is attacking, it deals its damage before units in battle with it. So should be able to kill maybe two things a turn. And then the key thing is I got to get it to die. Oh, sorry, I don't have it yet. <laughs> I just have the spell to summon it. And that's it for me. Now we're going to check what the Blight of Neverset does. So we roll this little activation die and they got a one, which says they just reveal as their main action their leftmost aspect. All right, so what friend are we dealing with today? Allure. Okay, so this one has two attack, two life, one blood. At the start of the Chimera's turn, remove one status token from this unit. It starts with two. If you do, the target opposing player must draw one card, then discard one card off the top of their draw pile. Hey, I'm the one making people discard stuff here, okay? Get out of here with your allure. All right, so that's got two status tokens, so it could do that twice. And then uh, at the end of each round, it'll refill the status tokens if I haven't defeated it. And allure does have an attack icon, so they would attack my leftmost unit if given the chance, uh, if they're activated to attack, which they usually won't be until all these have been flipped. But back to me, let's go ahead and activate our Summon Seaside Raven spell. So that's an exhaustion token to show I can't use it again. And I have to spend three basic dice. Let's do one of each color so I can still uh, use a Meditate ability. That's a side action you can take to get that to be one damage dealer if I need to. And that brings the Seaside Raven into play, and it immediately can destroy somebody with two life or less which will be a lore here, and it has one blood, so it's going to deal one damage to the Blight as it dies. So, yay, you are 130th dead. And I could use Saria's ability, Heart's Pool, because that's a side action. It would exhaust her, and I'd have to use a Heart, one of the uh, three that I have. And it would let me draw a card, and then if I do, I could choose a target player to discard one card at the top of their draw pile. And just to mention how decking out, like getting rid of all their cards works for the Chimera, because I actually didn't know how this worked because I'd never played a uh, decking out deck before. So in the normal competitive game, when your deck is empty, you can't draw cards anymore. And anytime you would have to, you take a damage. How it works for the Chimera, though, is they never run out of cards. But when they go through their deck for the first time, they'll activate this fatigued card. Or you got to go through their deck twice if you're playing with two player co-op. And then their fatigue. Now they do shuffle their deck back up. They'll keep uh, summoning aspects with it. But otherwise, they can't draw cards anymore, and anytime they would have to discard a card, they take a wound instead. So basically, once their deck has gone through once, you can force them to take damage whenever they would have to discard. And yeah, you know what? Looking at my cards, uh, I would need a single heart to summon the Enchanted Violinist, a single mask to play Abundance, uh, a heart to activate Purge, and potentially another basic. So that's one, two, three, four dice. And then a heart to summon the Three-Eyed Owl. That's five dice. That still leaves me with two more if I need it. So I'll go ahead and use your heart's pool. So I'll draw a card, which does get me closer to decking. Oh, it's another copy of Purge. That's fun. <laughs> so yeah, I get to draw a card and I get to make them discard a card, which doesn't hurt them at all yet, but it is getting them closer to the bottom of their deck. All right, so that was a main and a side action for me. Now they're doing a 10. It says uh, side action, attach a bleed conjured alteration card to the opposing player's leftmost unit, and then they're going to reveal somebody. So alteration spells affect another card, and they just kind of sit on them. In this case, this unit has the bleed ability. At the end of your turn, place one wound token on this unit. And a turn is just a single instance of uh, <laughs> doing the main action and the side action stuff. So that's going to kill my Seaside Raven pretty darn quickly. Which means I definitely want him to attack um, the enemy they're revealing maybe right away. Oh, and he's got three life. That'll work out well. Photosynthesize. So it's got three status tokens. And it's got this little bitey icon in the middle, which means that it would try to attack Saria directly if it attacked, not one of my units. And Photosynthesize. At the start of the Chimera's turn, remove one status token from this unit to raise one basic rage die one level. Oh, and card, card, card. I forgot all about the rage dice. Whenever I roll the activation die, I'm also supposed to roll one of the rage dice. Oh, and that one got the red reins token or icon. And then here's for their second turn just now. That one did not. When these are all showing that symbol, 
They go back to basic and they get one red range token. And whenever they build up to three, the guy's going to fire off his ultimate ability. And additionally, if there are aspects left alive at the end of the round, which there probably will be since I'm not as much of an attacker as I usually am, they get free red raid tokens for each aspect left alive as well. All right, but yes, uh, here we go. My main action is going to be for the Seaside Raven to attack Photosynthesize. So that'll exhaust them. Usually anyone being attacked who isn't exhausted gets to counterattack for free. When your units counterattack, then they get exhausted, but the opposing units do not get exhausted when they counterattack. But if they already are exhausted, they don't have an attack stat. They don't have any abilities except for ones in boxes like this one. But here, since they have quick strike, they'll just attack first. Now, uh, if they had units that can guard other units, then they would try to step in the way. But if they don't, I have to roll the die. And on a nine plus, the Chimera will defend their units. So we really don't want that here. Nope. So our three damage attack goes through. Photosynthesize is defeated. And we do two more damage to the Chimera. Oh, and I forgot to exhaust myself last turn. And then I could do a side action. I don't have uh, any that I can choose. So that's going to be it for my turn, which means bleeding, bleeding, seaside ravens, bleeding, sadness. All right, back over to our planty friend. They got an 11. Is that the same thing? Oh, I guess another bleeding won't really hurt. So they did get another red rains symbol. And yeah, it says they attach a bleed conjured alteration spell to the opposing player's leftmost units. All right, so I think you can have more than one copy of the same card on somebody. If I'm wrong, let me know. But there we go. He's double bleeding. I mean, he was going to die anyway, but now he'll really die. And what's their next friend? Sewing Strike. So when this unit is declared as an attacker, place a Scarlet Seed Conjured Aspect onto the battlefield. If you cannot, because there are a very limited number of them, place one Raid Raids token on the Chimera. Three life, three attack. Ouch, y'all. <laughs> I don't love that. And they're going to go straight for my Phoenix Born, but she has 20 life, so I guess I can tank a few of hits like that. All right, so I do want to get a way to deal damage ready to kill the Scarlet Seed. So the Enchanted Violinist could do that, or I could meditate to change my... That was not a leaf. That was definitely a basic die. <laughs> I could uh, do that to change my basic die into a frog to do one damage. Meditating is a side action. You can discard cards from the top of your deck or from your hand, or I think from your ready area as well. And for each card you discard, which again is bringing you closer to running out of cards, you can change a die to whatever you want. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and play Abundance. So this is kind of one of the key cards for me. It costs a mask to play. I still have two of those. And then I can exhaust it as a main action. All players may draw up to two cards. For each card they cannot or do not draw, deal one damage to their Phoenixborn. Now, whenever the Chimera would draw cards, it is discard them immediately. And you can play where you ch make choices for the Chimera. So I could just say, hey, you don't want to draw two cards. You want to take two damage. But uh, if you play like the harder rules where you have to make intelligent choices for them to some extent, then they would try to draw cards until their deck is empty. And focus means if I have another copy of this in play, it gets this boost. And focus two means if I have three copies of this in play, it gets this boost. So reduce the damage your Phoenixborn receives from the spell by one or two. So basically you can choose to not draw the cards yourself and suffer less or no damage while still milling them really quickly. Okay, so I'll go ahead and play that for my main action with the mask. That goes in my ready reusable area here. And that's another main action to activate. Yeah, I mean, all my stuff is, <laughs> except for the Song of Sorrow if I play the violinist. So I guess I'm done. They're just going to beat me up. And oh no, Seaside Raven, you're dead. But I can summon him again next turn. And they're about to flip probably their last aspect, which we don't have to roll for them anymore. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I really don't love all this red rain stuff going on. Uh, seven. Oh god, they raise one basic rage die one level, and then they reveal their next aspect. Now they only roll those dice and all that stuff while they have unrevealed aspects. Once they're all revealed, then they'll just attack with the leftmost unexhausted one. Uh, so this is Soothing Scent. Can attack for three. Might want to get a unit out just to tank that. Tame one. While this unit is in battle, the attack value of all units in battle with it is reduced by one. Okay. Oh, and Defender, this unit will block for the Chimera and guard for aspects without this ability. The Chimera will not guard for this unit. Well, ain't that lovely. Okay, so that's all they do for the moment, but next turn they are going to attack my Phoenixborn with the Sewing Strike, and then they'll attack uh, with the Soothing Scent the second after that. All right, to be able to block the Soothing Scent, dude, he's going to do three more damage to me because I don't think I can survive that. I'm going to go ahead and summon the three. I'm going to play my ready spell, summon three-eyed owl as my main action, and then I can exhaust it and use a heart to get a three-eyed owl conjuration onto the battlefield, just to tank in this case. All right, and they do not have anyone face down, so they're just going to have their leftmost person who wants to attack, attack. He's attacking me for three, and when they are declared as an attacker, they place a Scarlet Seed aspect onto the battlefield. Yay. 
So this will come out with three status tokens. At the start of each of their turns, it will remove one. And then if there are no status tokens, it goes away and they place a red range token on their chimera. And red range token is identical to them rolling all five of these to this symbol. And that gets them one third of the way to firing off their ultimate. We really don't want that. And this guy hit my summoner for three. Uh, great. I'm oh, sorry. Let's get the uh, status tokens there. All right, this dude's about to attack in a second. So let's go ahead and summon with a heart. I have one left, my three-eyed owl. His abilities peer. When this unit comes into play, look at one random card in a target opponent's hand. And then memory drain at the end of the prepare phase. Choose a target opponent to discard one card of their choice from their hand. So if they stay alive, I can get con some consistent uh, discarding. But here, it's just going to be a blocker with two life, I think. Now I get to look at a random card in the opponent's hand. <laughs> so how that works is I take the top five cards, pretend this is their hand. I look at one of them. Hey, there's another Soothing Scent coming at some point. I don't know if I care. <laughs> and then you shuffle them all back up again. Oh, man. Did I, I went from a one blood on top to a two blood. I don't like that. All right. And I still have no uh, side actions. So start of their turn, one of these is going to go away. So I got to deal with that ASAP. And then Soothing Scent is going to attack my leftmost unit, which is a three-eyed owl, and they kill it. Wah, wah, wah. Now the Scarlet Sea, this is a new thing in this expansion. You'll see does not have an icon for attacking, which means they don't attack. So that's basically the end of their turn. They're going to keep on passing instead of doing anything now. But their status tokens will keep on depleting. So let's take care of that. By playing my Enchanted Violinist. So she's going to cost my last heart. Oh, crud, wait, can I? Yeah, okay, I'm good for... I won't be able to use my Purges, but I at least can still play them as main actions. Okay, so my Enchanted Violinist, she has the side action Song of Sorrow. To exhaust her, I can deal one damage to a unit. And if that kills the unit, then I make them discard one card from their draw pile. Heck yeah. So we're going to play her. There we go. And then let's immediately use her side action. To take out the Scarlet Seed here, it has no blood value, so it doesn't hurt the Chimera to destroy it. But with her power, I do get to discard. Yay, get out. Hey, that's a soothing scent I saw. <laughs> Glad that uh, the two blood is gone. And with that now, the Chimera is not going to do anything. So they're just going to pass consistently, and I can take as many main actions as I want. Which will be, let's see, I'll definitely play one Purge. These cost nothing to play. And then as a future main action, I can exhaust them and use a heart, which unfortunately I have no access to, to choose a player to discard one card off the top of their draw pile. And if I have two copies in play uh, with the Focus 1, which I will in a second, I can pay an extra basic die to have them discard an additional card. So I could with four dice, which seems a little expensive, <laughs> I could have them purge four cards a turn with this. All right, so we will take just two main actions to do that. And uh, what else do I want to do? Well, you know, before we do that, let's look at our options for a second. I'm going to use Abundance. Remember, that lets uh, us draw up to two cards. So I'm going to go ahead and draw up to two cards. I don't want to take any damage. So that'll give me more things. Ooh, Channel Magic. And another Abundance. Okay, cool. And then they also will draw two. And immediately discard them. So boop. Okay, and then I do have a Mask left. So I'm going to play a second copy of Abundance, the one I just drew. And then each of these is a separate copy that can use its own power. So I'll go ahead and focus that one. Or sorry, exhaust that one. And this is my main action again. These are all main actions. So now I can ignore one damage I would be dealt from not drawing cards. So I can choose to draw a single card and take no damage. I got sympathy pain. Well, we'll look at what those are in a second. But they're going to discard two cards again. All right, so one, two. I mean, that's pretty good. I think we're already about halfway through their deck. Of course, we have to do <laughs> 27 damage to them after we deck them, so it's not going to be quick. But the lovely thing is we can use the abundances over and over again. They won't require anything like the purge. All right, so all I have mana-wise is two basic mana. I could upgrade one to be the frog to do a damage, or this one can downgrade two of their dice, which might be worth doing, honestly. But let's see what new options I got. Sympathy Pain needs a snake or a horse. I don't have horse in my dice, but the snake is... What is that? I think that's the highest version, yeah, of the charm dice and this is a reaction spell play the spell after one or more wound tokens are placed on your phoenix born from an attack spell ability or dice power deal two damage to a unit or phoenix born that opponent controls so that'd be nice to just uh, take out one of the people when i get hit the purges you already saw and then channel magic draw one card <laughs> i don't really want to do that remove one wound from a target phoenix born raise three dice in your active pool one level uh, just one level, so that would turn basics into not frogs, but leaves and masks in this case, so it's not that great. Well, in any case, I'll take two main actions to play my purges. So those are all the ready spells I'm going to get. Any more copies will just go underneath these ones, and I don't have any more copies of those, so it's really just one more abundance, and I don't know if I need another purge. I should have put another channel magic in probably instead of a third one. 
And actually, let me take that stuff back slightly because I am going to run out of main actions here. So I will. So in the turn that I activated the second abundance, let's go ahead and say that I discarded the channel magic and the top card of my deck. Ah, oh, hidden power is good. Darn it. Um, to change both of these with the meditation side action into their strongest versions. And then as a main action, I'll play purge. And as a side action, use the frog to do a damage to uh, Soothing Scent. And then I can kill it with like my Violinist really quickly next turn. And then main action, I'll play the other Purge. And side action, I'll use the Wolf Head. That's the Illusion Dice Power effect to lower two dice in a target opponent's active pool. Since they're about to get uh, two Red Rains tokens from people being left alive, I figure I should uh, at least stop this from building up too quickly. All right, and then I'll pass, and they pass, and we're all done. And I've got uh, one copy of Sympathy Pain in my hand. I'm going to draw back up, and we'll see how things go. So we go into the recovery phase. The important things that happen. They've got two Chimeras, or sorry, Aspects left alive. So boop, boop. They get two Red Rains tokens, one more, and they'll shoot off their ultimate. Oh, Lord. And also all Exhaustion tokens are gone from everybody. They replenish Aspects. They're always going to have their threat value of four Aspect cards ready to go. So on their future turns, they're most likely going to flip these two and then start attacking with these ones again. All right, and with that, we're pretty much ready to go, except this time, oh no, the Chimera is going to go first on this round. I don't like that. All right, so their first activation is another Red Reigns and a six. Uh, they, raise, uh, they raise one Ray basic die, one level, and they reveal somebody. This is going to be ultimating in a second. Let's look at what it is. <laughs> I should be ready for it. After placing Red Rain, they're going to the Chimera. Da, 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 da. So, yeah, they lose the things. They get rid of cards that I placed on their battlefield. I didn't do that. They bleed uh, the leftmost unit of each opponent. And they add a face down aspect card. Oh, man, they add another aspect. That's terrible. Okay, so the main thing is they're going to bleed, I guess, my Enchanted Violinist. So she won't survive that. That sucks if that happens. Oh, wait, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I should probably see what my cards are. I could have discarded the Sympathy Pain, but I don't want to. I got a Rose Fire Dancer. Uh, this one is... Yeah, that's right. She can exhaust a unit each round. Or she just has three attack, which is certainly not uh, anything to sneeze at. I got Willpower, which lets me deal damage to a unit equal to the number of cards in my hand. So I could like do it right now and do... Is that four or five? I don't know. Either way, it's a lot. Uh, seal. Ooh, choose a ready spell on a target player's spell board and place an exhaustion token on it. Their only ready spell for the Chimera is their ultimate. But it does mean I would get to remove a Red Reigns token from them at the end of the round if they have one. Uh, hidden Power lets me draw a card and change five dice to a side of my choice. It's pretty dang good. <laughs> uh, sympathy Pain you already saw. And yeah, that's all of them. Okay. And let's roll and hope for more uh, six special sides this time. Oh, come on, dice. Okay, so what we get? We got two, two snakes, and two, a heart, and a basic. That's pretty good for pink. We got no wolves. We got no, um, <laughs> what is it, frogs. Although I could use my hidden power to get some of those. All right, so, you know, not the worst, not great. Getting back to them. They get to reveal the next person. Oh, it's another Soothing Scent. Well, that would be a nice target for the Seaside Raven to kill, wouldn't it? Oh, while this unit is in battle. Oh, no, no, never mind. Um, that's only if you battle him. I'm talking about the Seaside Raven just eating them automatically. All right, so yeah, you know what? I think it's worth it. Uh, let's go ahead and summon my Seaside Raven for three basic. I don't know. Let's use those three. And they immediately kill somebody with two life, which will be the full life Soothing Scent. And they uh, do two damage to the Chimera. And then next turn, they can kill the Sewing Strike, I guess. Oh, and let's, uh, before they get bled to death or something, let's have the Enchanted Violinist do their basic action. Deal one damage, killing the other Soothing Scent. That'll do two more damage. I'm doing decent damage just from killing things. And then I uh, discard a card because I finished off one of their units. Awesome. So we are very close to fatigue damage happening. All right, now it's back to their turn. 50-50 chance here that they uh, get a red rain result and activate their ultimate. Oh, they didn't. And they rolled bad. Just reveal a card. That was great. Oh, and that's their last dude. So we shouldn't. Ha oh, man, it's a lore again. What this do? Oh, draw a card and discard a card. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think I just got to let that be alive for a second. <laughs> or, hmm. I could have a seaside raven kill the allure. Let the sewing strike attack me. Use sympathy pain when it does, because I do have a spare snake. That would do two damage back to it. And then if I can meditate or use hidden power to change my one remaining blue into a frog, I could finish them off. Because I am worried that I've already drawn a lot of cards myself and I'll run out of cards pretty quickly. Because also the Allure is going to attack my Enchanted Violinist. So yeah, yeah, you know, I think that's what I'm going to do. So Seaside Raven is going to attack the Allure. Um, there are none of the other dudes to guard, but we do have to see if the Phoenixborn or the Chimera guards. 
which would be, ah, they do friggin' fridge. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it does get him to 10 life, <laughs> or 10 damage, to say, so that's not a terrible thing. And then side action. I don't think I have any side actions that I want to do, do I? Or I should say, or I should say I don't have any side actions that I can do. Okay, so start of their turn, this comes off. I draw a card and then have to discard a card. Another sympathy pain. And then they're attacking me with Sewing Strike, and I have no one who can block. So I'm down to six, uh, 14 life. But I can still do this part of my plan <laughs> and use uh, one of my remaining snake dice to do Sympathy Pain. And we can do two damage to any unit. Maybe I do just kill the Allure. Oh, shoot, I've got to put the, uh, yeah, the Scarlet Seed in play. Yeah, so I will go ahead and do, it says any unit, I'll kill the Allure instead of damaging the Sewing Strike. So that does another one damage to the boss. I gotta take care of this dude before it uh, messes me up. So yeah, I want to get... I don't have any way to do one damage except for... Oh, I got Strange Copy. This is a cool card. Uh, you play the spell after an opponent declares attackers. Choose a unit you control to become a copy of a target unit for the remainder of the turn. This copy replaces its title, abilities, attack, life, recovery values to become a copy of the target unit. So basically when they attack me with somebody, usually I will use this on my three-eyed owl and turn it into like a three-attack guy and they can kill each other. Which uh, is not going to matter for this current turn, but it's good to have. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is use a mask um, to play Hidden Power. I draw one card and I change five dice in my active pool to a side of my choice. Hidden Power. Great. And yeah, clearly <laughs> all of these will become... Their best sides. And then I got to figure out what I want to do with the rest of my turn. Because I got a lot of cards and I don't know if I want to play any of them. All right, so they pass except for losing one of these. So they're... Oh, wait, should they should they be a three or two? Well, either way, I'm going to kill them. Because <laughs> as a side action on this turn, I will use this to deal one damage and take care of the Scarlet Sea before it uh, turns into a red rain. And then as a main action, uh, let's go and use Abundance. So I'll draw one card and then not take a damage because I have a second copy. Got seal, okay. And they'll discard two cards. So almost very close to dealing automatic damage. And they got nobody left, so they're just gonna pass a whole bunch. Ooh, and I got willpower, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna use this with one of my snakes to deal damage to target units uh, equal to the number of cards in my hand, which is five or six. Again, I don't think it counts itself, so five. And that definitely kills Sewing Strike, which gets them to 13 damage. And more importantly, they're not going to fire off their ultimate yet because they aren't going to have an automatic aspect at the end of the turn to give them one. And then for another main turn, it's pricey. But I'm going to use Seal to put an exhaustion token on their ultimate, which is going to make them lose an entire red rain token. I could have just used the wolf to turn two of these into basic dice, but now I'm taking away again the equivalent of all five dice going uh, at the end of this round. So that's a nice play, I think. But only with a single snake die. What have I left to my hand? Hidden power I don't want. Seal I don't want. Strange copy is awesome for later. And the Rose Fire Dancer I don't have enough to summon, which is fine. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Next main action. I'm going to use Abundance again. I'm going to draw another card. Get another Strange copy. I am also running out of cards. But they're going to draw two or discard two. They only got one card left before they are fatigued. Yes. I really wish I'd drawn the last copy of Abundance. Then I would take no damage and I could do it three times a turn, doing six damage to them, which is great. But all right, and yeah, I'm not going to play any more cards for my hand. I have that one die left and it is a pink. So let's go ahead and summon my one three-eyed owl, which lets me look. I guess I can peek at the only card they have. And then it's going to get discarded at the end. Oh, at the end of the prepare phase. So no, they'll have already like summoned it and stuff. But cool. That'll give me another automatic damage in a second. And the big thing is that three-eyed owl is going to be a lovely uh, target for strange copy in a second to block some big dude and sacrifice. And I think that's all I can do with no dice left. So we go into the recovery phase. And they were moving exhaustion, and because they did, they also lose one red reigns. Yes. And they don't get any automatic red reigns because they don't have any aspects left. Oh, you know, I realize now getting them to discard in this case uh, down to fewer than four cards was kind of a waste because they don't take any damage from putting out their aspects. So they are fatigued now. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's good. But they are still going to be able to shuffle their aspects and put four more in play without taking any damage. But from now on, whenever they need to draw, they can't which means whenever I use Abundance, it's going to be two straight up damage. And uh, if they need to discard, they also take an automatic damage. All right, and this is going to point back at me for me to take the first turn. And everything's unexhausted. All right, let's roll my dice a few at a time. Ooh, ooh, that's a lot of, of goodness. <laughs> I rolled a single frog. Um, but yeah, look, a heart and a mask. Three wolves, um, which is that what I need for the... Yeah, it is what I need for the strange copy. Heck yeah. And a snake... 
and then four basic. I could use some more hearts, but otherwise that's a great roll. And you can discard any number of cards and then draw up. But you know what? <laughs> Honestly, I have, um, you know, if I use abundance, I'm going to be drawing cards anyway, so I don't mind these. And again, strange copy is going to let me block well with some people, so this is okay to start. Oh, and now this fires off. At the end of the prepare phase, choose a target opponent to discard one card. But since they are fatigued, discard just means damage, baby. How much do I need to do? 16? So if I did both abundances, that would be four. If I did both purges fully max, that would be eight. Three-eyed Al, if it survives, would be nine. I mean, I can just auto-kill them from using my abundances and purges <laughs> with, uh, without doing anything else if they don't kill me. So I, I definitely think I'm going to be in a powerful position here. Again, this is the easiest level, of course. So you know that, that makes a big difference. Now, let's see. I've got a lot of people. I don't want to do much until they start bringing out their dudes. So let's go ahead and exhaust my first abundance. I will still draw a card so I don't take any damage. Oh, that's my other abundance. <laughs> Y'all are dead. Um, but that's going to do two damage to them since they can't draw. So that gets them to 16 out of 30. And then for a side action, I've got an abundance of wolf heads. Let's spend one to just knock them farther away from their ultimate, I think. Okay, that's it for me. Let's see what they've got. Oh, they wouldn't have gotten the thing anyway. And just uh, three, just revealing. Awesome. All right, who's up? Another photosynthesize. At the start of the Chimera's turn, remove one status token. Don't to raise one basic rage die. It's not fun. Yeah, none of these people are going to attack anytime soon. In fact, I think this Chimera attacks way less often than normal, which makes sense because their units seem to just like mess you up if you leave them in play. Yeah, on a four to five, they would attack. Uh, but let's just kill the guy, right? Or try to, and they might block again. Seaside Raven, get him! So on a uh, nine plus, they will block. And that was a 10. <laughs> what the heck? I mean, it's fine. Because again, they are super, super hurt. That's 19, y'all. And oh my gosh, that's right. With my second abundance, now I can do four damage. Six, eight with per... Oh God, eight. Eight plus 19, we get them to 27. Can I just hit him for three more somewhere? Well, I guess we'll find out. Now, I won't do a side action for their turn. They are raising this up. And then they got a roll. And, ooh, a 10. That's the bleed. Oh, man, they're going to make my violinist bleed. <laughs> and then they got to reveal somebody. And it's another sewing strike that puts out the scarlet seeds. But yeah, enchanted violinist is going to be dead immediately. Uh, <laughs> so what should she do? Well, it's my main action. Let's have her attack the boss with her one attack. Because they don't have anybody with the defender, so they're not going to try to block for themselves. So they just go... To 20 out of 30. I just got to do 10 more. Uh, I'm not sure if I can, but it should be close to possible. And it's still not doing a side action. And sadly, my enchanted violinist bleeds to death. Very sad. Okay, now they photosynthesize again. So they're about to get another red rain token. And they might get it sooner than you think. No, they got a six. Raise basic rage die. There we go. So that immediately ticks all of these down. And they get their second red rain, but thank to my exhaustion token, that's not going to make them do their ultimate yet. And then they're revealing the third person. Who is it? Proliferate. When this unit comes into play, put a Scarlet Seed Conjured Aspect onto the battlefield. And then it has Defender, but only has one life. Man, I wish I had my, my violinist now. So hey, here you are, uh, little CD. Oh, now I'm thinking, maybe I use Hidden Power and start plinking them with uh, frogs. Yeah, let's do that as my main action. I'm going to use Hidden Power and my single mask. So I draw a card. Oh, Channel Magic, don't really need that. And I can change, what is it, up to five dice. Okay, well, yeah, that's all of them, right? Uh, one, yeah, two, three, four, five. Okay, so everything's going to be at max, which means I'll have some frogs to hit things with. And as my side action, let's immediately use one to kill the Proliferate first. Oh, and that'll hit the boss for one. Yay! But then coming back over here, this is two away from popping with the Red Rain. They've still got one hidden aspect, so they're still rolling. It's another six. Yeah, they're going to raise one of these up. And they reveal their last person. Another allure that makes me discard and draw, which I'm not worried about now, because clearly time is on my side. All right, so what's going to happen next? Oh, crud, I forgot about the photosynthesize. So they should have one more uh, die at its max. There we go. So I want to kill the Scarlet Seed. Let's do that first in my side action. Let's plink it for one. Doesn't do any damage to anybody, though. I'll just deal with the Allure's ability. I think I'll let the Photosynthesize hit me, but then use, uh, what is it? A uh, Strange Copy when they attack with the Sewing Strike and have the Three-Eyed Owl become a 3-3 three, three person. They'll kill each other. Yeah, that'll be pretty great. I think I can win this turn if this all works out. So uh, for now, let's go ahead and play my third copy of Abundance as a Master Action. I'll have to use... 
one of my two remaining wolf heads to do that for the mask. So now I will take zero damage if I draw nothing, but they'll still take two. So that's going to be four damage. Could be six, eight. That would get them to 29. And then, yeah, if I kill the uh, the Sewing Strike with my Seaside Raven counterattack, that'll finish them off. All right, so Allure fires off. I draw another Enchanted Violinist. Yay. And I discard a copy of Willpower. Gosh, I got a lot of cards. Um, and then Photosynthesize attacks me straight up, and I let them. So I go down to eight life. But Sewing Strike, we got something for you in a second. But on my turn, let's go ahead and use our second Abundance with Focus 2. I can choose to draw nothing and have no negative effect. But since they can't draw either of the two cards, boom, boom, they're at 23. So when Strike comes for me, which unfortunately does trigger, it's put out a Scarlet Seed power. And I'm going to use Strange Copy with my last Wolf Head. This is an either or cost, by the way. That's why it also has a Unicorn. So I'm going to choose a unit. Um, to become a copy of the Sewing Strike. Oh, I just realized I could have picked anybody when somebody attacks. So I could have like had the Three-Eyed Owl become a copy of Sewing Strike and fight the Soda Photosynthesize. All right, so by the way, they're both 3-3. Uh, three, three. And then since he's attacking my Phoenix Born, anybody can block for her. Uh, when a unit is being attacked, you need to have a unit specifically with the unit guard ability to block. So he will block and exhaust himself and they kill each other and two damage to the dude. Which means we're at 25. You know what? They did play a new Scarlet Seed, and we can't have that. Let's play our Enchanted Violinist <laughs> with one of our three remaining dice here. Now let's go and have her fire off her ability to kill the Scarlet Seed and force them to discard a card, and they can't. They're 26. Yeah, this should be in the bag now, people. Uh, but first, Allure will fire off. I draw another Enchanted Violinist, and I discard a Seal. See, I was down to only five more cards. And then they attack my leftmost unit with my Seaside Raven. I could block with uh, Saria, but no, let's uh, just let them kill it. Since it's exhausted, it doesn't get to respond, so it just gets defeated by them. But I forgot, I could actually summon another one, <laughs> which would let me immediately kill a lore for one damage and then attack Photosynthesize for three. But that, that, that's way too aggressive. I just want to feed this dude until he dies. But yeah, they're done. So plant food it up, baby. Eat, eat, eat. Two damage to them, none to me. And then I, I only have to use this once. I didn't use Purge much. <laughs> I'm going to exhaust one copy of Purge with a pink die and then use another pink die. I don't have any basics since I have at least one extra Purge to make them discard two cards. To You ate too much. Feed me, Seymour. I did and you died. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> I thought it had it back. I just flipped it to its more powerful side. <laughs> That's not as much fun. But well, there you go. That was a basic deck. So a pretty good one. One that uh, definitely does the milling thing well. A basic deck versus uh, the basic level of Blight of Neverset. Unless you feel bad for our friend, don't forget that they could play on standard level two, where they would have an extra thing every turn. Standard level three, where they would have six things every turn. Or hey, you could even go to heroic level, where they have 35 life and seven every turn. <laughs> of course, for that, you probably want to construct your deck more than I did here with just a few substitutions. But yeah, I really enjoy this one. Like I said, I think it is the most different we've seen. The second boss they came out with, the uh, the Frost Wild, is that what it was called? Frost Wild Scourge? That one had uh, some alterations they would put on your people, which were pretty cool. But this one is very non-attack focused, you know, at least with many of their units. And they have tons of like status things. So they just kind of sit there and wait for you to deal with them while they mess you up in numerous ways. So I think it's great. I think they're doing a great job with this design. And it was cool to try out a very different type of Phoenix Born deck as well. Saria is super different than the other two I played. And, you know, pretty effective. Again, I don't know how I would have done with this basic deck against uh, five aspects of turn instead of four. But with only uh, four, what did I take? Eight damage out of 20. And they never got to fire off their first ultimate with uh, some good management of stuff. So, yeah, that was cool. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I'm going to close it out with a big thank you to our highest tier Patreon supporters. That's Minkus, J. Willie MF. Steve Wren, and Pedro Lucas. So grateful to all of you and all our amazing supporters out there. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.